Hello, and welcome back once again to Lance Bernard's Haphazard Recordings. I'm not going to say brought to you by and all that jazz. I find that redundant, annoying, and preposterous. So let's just go ahead and get on with it. In this essay, we're going to be covering a vast variety of details, including ley lines, ancient maps, mud flood. And, uh, of course, that's not a mud flood. That's just, uh, you know, a digital copy. This is an actual mud flood occurring. And uh, so there. It happens. Yay. As you can see, it was more mud than water. Some of these maps are pointless, and I will get back to some of them shortly. But in the meantime, I want to show you some architecture in Africa, in different areas of Africa. We're going to be running through some of the maps and the ley lines, or just lines that are put into maps. Um, I could do a quick research on why lines are on maps. This is an underwater sculpture. I believe this fish was talented enough to carve out that particular sculpture, or maybe not. Maybe it wasn't the fish doing it. These are all in Africa, these architectural structures. And as you can see, the differences in the types of architecture in the different areas of Africa. Now, as you may notice, I have a different microphone, and I am beefing up my production quality. And so you will be able to hear me more comfortably, listen to my voice more easily, and not have to look at my ridiculous face. On-screen presence is something that's advertised for YouTubers to do. I tried it, and it was difficult for me because I kept looking at my own image, and then I would get caught like a deer in the headlights. And uh, that's why I don't have any mirrors in the house, because I'm so enamored by my looks. So with that being said, this is some more architecture in Africa. As you can see how extremely indigenous it seems to the area. Actually, it looks like something that should be in, uh, you know, Greece or Rome. This is the supposed shape of our Earth. There are two Earths, and there are two disks that look just like this. And this is the actual shape of the Earth that they're keeping hidden from you. It's a big star. Now, you might think to yourself or say to me personally that uh, you're just making fun of this stuff, and you should be more serious about this stuff. And while I'm not sure that's going to make that much of a difference, I'm not trying to discount the people that are aware of the electromagnetic anomalies and the magnetic universe and how these star forts would communicate and transfer the electromagnetics. I can't figure it out personally by looking at them, and it seems to be a far-stretched assumption that the forts are laid out with these types of um, angles. And, of course, angles uh, create vibrations. We all are aware of the details of light and sound being vibrations themselves. But to take a look at these underwater sculptures is, is an interesting uh, detail. Um, I think, personally, that's just me. These are not underwater, and these are some more uh, African architecture. Now, you see the difference between, say, this architecture and then this one, which really aren't too far from each other in Africa. And you say to yourself, well, you know, it's a mosque, and the antiquitech on this mosque is fairly obvious. This is underwater. It's an art exhibit in Cancun. You can, uh, you know, you can throw on your scuba gear and, dive on down, have a look-see, and it's a wonderful thing. More architecture in Africa. And I'm just kind of, you know, obviously glazing through these to give you some different ideas. This is a beautiful piece made of sticks and, uh, you know, sticks, trees, twigs, etc. This is another beautiful piece of African architecture. Um, with a beautiful woman in a beautiful gown. That is just fantastic. The gold. And uh, she's a happy camper. She's busy. She's working. And she's got a great-looking little place there. I wouldn't mind going in, taking a look around. Maybe she'll 
invite us over. If somebody would go ahead and track her down, send her a letter, I'll go with you. As long as you pay the plane fare. Here's another uh, interesting way of getting up and down in some African architecture. Once again, the curious anomalies of African architecture. Hmm. Hmm. Really well done. Looks like it was absolutely bombed, devastated, and demolished. It's um, quite a curiosity in, as to why all of our beautiful structures, our, the planet, you know, the plane, all of these structures that are in relatively the same area built with such different uh, building and architectural techniques. Of course, this is there as well. Everyone knows Petra and um, the curiosities uh, surrounding the carving of Petra, the creation of it, the size of the doors, of course, and then why and how somebody could, uh, you know, um, carve this out underwater. I mean, you got to be pretty talented. Here's another um, area in Indonesia that is um, underwater sculpture. Of course, they didn't sculpt it underwater. I'm not that ridiculously foolish. I just act that way. But the curiosity of this piece is just amazing. I mean, why it was built in the first place, what it was for. Um, the ley lines of our world, I'm not going to put a lot of time into ley lines because I'm really not into... Uh, the social structure of finding your soulmate and that's not what ley lines are about that's a joke this is nice so this is not a joke this is a beautiful carving that eventually ended up underwater this is on its way to being buried this beautiful sculpture buried by as you can see this is mud this is water and dirt in a very thick fashion that is just burying a town and once again, Africa. Let's take a quick look at some of the beautiful work that is done in Africa by Africans. It's nice. You guys are great. I love you. You do great work. So this may give one pause to ponder, and it may not. Again, African architecture at a dam. Dam! And the depth of the gorge... Of course, the structures that are built along the side and how they're built right in to the stone, to the rock. See how this comes down and that like almost seems to unite together and meld together. Uh, relatively fascinating, the archways. And uh, this may have done, been done by uh, Civil War soldiers, as I mentioned in my old Civil War, back in the days of the Civil War, when we freed the land. And then the architectural anomalies that you may be able to notice and see with the uh, pillar, the Corinthian-style pillars, and uh, what we call Greco-Roman with um, the Antiquitech in the back. A part of this video, I want to cover Antiquitech because of the facts that I was uh, doing some of this research and came across in my research, um, these details concerning... Um, architecture and architecture in whoops by aliens and so we want to keep that to ourselves i'm going to go ahead and thumb through a couple of these images that was at the tip of the uh, metal and uh, electricity and formal dances now this is something that i just was like what all right electricity and formal dances of the past uh -huh. or why it is called a ball, roughly translated. This is an article by Tech Dancer translated by me with the help of various online translators. Sarcasm and slang do not translate well. If you have a suggestion for a better translation, please share the group information. Hello, friends. We will continue to solve this magical level. Before reading the answer, try as in the famous TV show, to find a connection between these objects. In my opinion, it jumps out quite clearly. Not working? Then read the answer. So let's start with the left picture. Before us, a normal ball in European languages, this is the name. This is the same. The ball, English, la belle, French, and der ball, German, 
Obviously, these words come from the evolution of one Latin root, pila. Even in Spanish, it will be la pelota, which, is, which could be easier. Football exists according to sources since the 19th century, but this game with the ball, and this game with the ball, mm-hmm, they have been known since the early 14th century, and their geography was Western Pian. In the official history, the Romans played the ball after the favorite exercises. Blah, blah, blah. I want to see balls. I want to see dances like this. I don't give me your crap. Basically, the ipso facto. Back in the day, they had electricity. They had it in their parties and in, in their buildings. You see the uh, spike up on top and the, the spires and the spikes that were taken down on this one. Ball, ball, and the reason for the ball was this spiky thing right here, the antiquitech of the day. And if you look at the image in the center of this, you will notice that people are dancing and there are lights and lights up above and below. And in the antiquitech, there's another one where lights are obvious and evident. And I, my contention, here's another one, where everyone's out in the dark, but this is all lit up. And in the center of this lit up area, you have the antiquitech that's drawing in the energy, bringing it down to balls that are above the people, like in this photograph. You see the balls up above them and the balls up above them. That's where the term ball came from. Here, once again, we have the antiquitech, the lights, the balls. So this is the term of ball, and to get back into the article that we're looking at and their long-winded hokum and fluff, I'm not really into the hokum and fluff of things. Uh, You people want to get all detailed. I'm I'm not you people, but the people that write this. Um, To baffle and confuse and um, actually to dissuade you from, from getting to know, from getting to know. That's the thing. I mean, if they can if they can sidetrack you far enough to where you you really aren't getting the information, you're being sidetracked from the information by this type of hokum and fluff. They think they're being uh, specifically detailed. <laughs> I think they're just blowing a bunch of hot smoke up your pooter so that you can be baffled and not really quite understand what the hell. So once again, when you uh, let's see what this bonus image is. There you go. This is just evidentiary fact. You can go ahead and look at these things, determine for yourself. Um, And in my opinion, we had electricity long ago. And, uh, you know, Edison inventing electricity is a bunch of crap. That that invention of that creation of that story was so that we could pay out our cash. That's what that's about. It's about putting out your money. And, uh, and the government taking money for stuff that should have been free. As you can see, the Antiquitech, and once again, this is architecture in Africa. Fascinating, fascinating stuff, in my humble opinion. There are so many wide varieties of architecture that show up in Africa, like this, for instance, in relation to the mud huts we were looking at, in relation to, say, this. And it's not that it's more diminished society. It's just one with less experience in building and uh, less plans. Um, This type of architecture and structure is by somebody with a lot of experience. He knows what they're doing and probably stands about 30 feet tall. (laughs) Here's some more amazing architecture that is also located in Africa. Cape Horn, I believe. And this particular one, Cape Town, I'm sorry, Cape Town, says right up above. I am still, once again, uh, in the learning process of my video making. But I am bringing up some, I believe, very fascinating structures. This was carved out of one piece. And I'm not going to joke around about it being overnight. I'm sure that it took quite some time. The stories of the angels coming in and building these types of structures are curious. The top of the world, if I bring in the Google Maps um, and look at the very top, see here's the top and there's America over here, Russia over there, um, Google Earth right in the middle. <laughs> it's pretty obvious, it says Google Earth right on it. 
And part of this demonstration that I'm putting out to you today, aside from checking my uh, relative sanity, is to take a look at um, and listen to how this new microphone of mine is working, whether or not it buzzes when I raise my voice, and there's the top of the ball. Now, if I bring the uh, the ball, 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 and now we just take a look at the image that we were just looking at here. Notice North America slightly up to the left, North America slightly up to the left, and gee, it seems like there's a huge landmass that just ain't there. It just ain't there anymore, Elmo. Well, that's just uh, kind of a surprise, isn't it? Yeah, well, it's pretty obvious that, you know, now, all right, I'll go back to this, and you know the obvious nature of this. The land mass is missing. Do you really think that it, all that land just poof disappeared out of this neck of the woods right here? Just gone. Just gone, mister. Somebody pointed out that this line, if you look for one of these lines, like right here, and zoom in close, you will notice structures and types of like mountains and water underneath the line itself. If you zoom in close, you'll actually see textures of land mass. Okay, that's cool. That's nice. And so if you consider why would they hide that? Why would they, they, whoever they is, you know, that faceless money printer, they, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Maybe they're trying to keep something from us. Maybe. Oh, they wouldn't do that. Like this guy. This has made me curious. Okay, that's a samurai sword. That's a that's a hentai benihansa. It's a, a, a you know, arigato, kanichiwa. I mean, why would you slice up? Okay, it's probably the best blade he's got. Why else would he use it to slice up beef? Where's the beef? Beautiful architecture once again. And then underwater exhibits around the world that are set up. So people can actually just dive down and go to an underwater museum. This is an underwater museum right here. And I found some fascination in that. I am interested in, in investigating these old world maps and say, um, well, looking at the date of the map in the first place, I don't really uh, spot a date. I'm going to zoom in and look at the corners to see if I can distinguish any of the writing. Or if there were a date, you know, we'd be able to see it. Whether or not we'd distinguish the numbers. I uh, Chihuahua. And so then, therefore, and that and all. I hope I was clear about that. But what I was once again about to mention before I got so distracted was the uh, water in Africa up here on the upper left, the huge lakes that were here. Uh, or maybe the map maker just was so confused, so confused that he thought that land was water. So, you know, if I zoom back here, run on over to the Africanius area, and uh, readjust my orientation slightly and then zoom in what do we have do we have those humongous lakes i don't see them we, we got some serious runoff going i mean in my opinion every time i've seen other people with their google earths of africa um, displays and and uh, videos there are these massive Flows. I mean, obvious flows. That doesn't look like it's flowing down, or this doesn't look like it's flowing this way. <laughs> well, okay, maybe that's just my imagination. Maybe it is. I don't know. I don't think so, honestly. There's Lake Chad. Maybe that was Lake Chad. Let's take a quick look at Lake Chad, because it's apparently this massive body of water that just blends into the sand, makes it look like sand. If we pop on over to this map again, take a quick preview of Lake Chad and its location being more this neck of the woods down here. We still have these huge bodies of water up top that are apparently not there anymore. 
And of course, that's once again not my fault. I'm just showing an observation. Don't blame me and don't shoot the messenger. So, um, once again, this is uh, some of the information that I'm going to be going through uh, far more uh, in far more detail. But to sit here for an hour and a half and, and fumble and bumble and babble and uh, wish and wonder about things isn't my game. Forest of Shadows. That's, well, I gotta, okay. The, oh, it's the Empire. Obviously, it's the Empire. So it's Blackwater over on the right. Johnson's World. World of Johnsons. Yeah. Not anymore. Not after World War II. Kind of lost most of our Johnsons, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Uh, and this guy out here in the ocean grabbing ships. Now, that's probably the guy in the Bermuda Triangle pulling ships down. So now you know why that happens when you go out there. There's this guy. A lot of these detailed maps, I would prefer to go through them privately, get my thoughts organized, put it together, arrange a video, and three years later, you'll see it. <laughs> All righty then. Once again, ley lines for you clubbers who want to go out and find your mate. These are the lines you use. Sioux Falls is popular. Let's head on over to Sioux Falls, Indianapolis. Man, let's charter some buses. Who's with me? And go out and, uh, you know, do a little clubbing. Uh, so these things I found fascinating, interesting, and especially the part about the balls. Um, and that the electricity and Antiquitech is so obvious. Here's some more African architecture in uh, Cape Town. It's beautiful. It's amazing. It's fantastic. There's Mr. Roosevelt, probably. It looks like Teddy Roosevelt. Uh -huh. Let's all, you know, praise and honor him and Edison for creating and inventing all of the wonderful things that they did. Once again, we are just purveying, surveying, and considering this architecture in relation to, from one type of architecture to the other. What you were just looking at is in this area, in Mali, and, uh, and these are structures. There was quite a civilization there in Mali. I would love to go there and visit. And so if you want to go ahead and send me a plane ticket and a hotel fare, that would be fine. I won't argue. This, again, in the same area, and uh, just fascinating and amazing how much time, effort, work, and pe how many people that would have taken to, to, to create that wonderful, wonderful uh, architecture. And so we covered the um, architecture. We covered some Google Earth. And I really enjoyed the uh, talking about the balls. And I think we're going to go through a little more of that Antiquitech architecture and how Edison stole everything in the American government is lying to us. But with that being said, I, I really appreciate you watching this short haphazard production. I hope you don't mind my lack of on-screen presence. And I also hope that my microphone is much better in this one than it has been in any of the past.